I get videos, or not videos, ha, huh? I get questions all the time from women um, suffering from broken hearts right after they watch my testimony and wedding story video. And in that video, I can't remember what I say. I know that I share my wedding story, and I love my wedding story because I suffered from a broken heart, the Lord healed everything, my husband and I ended up together in the end, but... um it's not, like, yes, it's wonderful that we ended up together and that is great. I'm a romantic at heart and I just adore my husband. And I mean, I've never loved, I knew he was my husband like the week I met him. So it was such a blessing that God allowed us to end up together. But um, I don't know if I shared in that video that we could have not ended up together and that the Lord would have still blessed both of us in our lives because we both are devoted believers that love him and are obeying him and he would have provided something else. Um, and I know that for some people that might be like killing the romance a little bit, but I like that better than Hollywood <laughs> because Hollywood would tell me if I didn't marry him, then my soulmate, then I would have lost, not been with my true soulmate and then I would have never truly been fulfilled. And I like it better that if we would have not ended up together, that God would have still provided and fulfilled me in with whoever he did uh, bless me with as a husband and that I still would have been completely happy. So um, that's a little better version and that's actually the truth. So that's great. Um, so don't let that kill the romance. Let that make you worship the Lord more because he's so good that, um, he can fix all the mess that we make, you know? And, um, that's the beauty of my story. I think that God fixed the mess we made and he still, and his gracious, gracious love allowed us to stay together, um, or end up together. So I always get messages from women in similar situations that are brokenhearted, waiting for this guy to just see the light and finally commit to them. And, I got counseled when I was, you know, going through all that, but it wasn't the best counsel. Um, I would say any part of the counsel that was good was that I should have disconnected, you know, like severed, completely severed communication with him. And I never followed that counsel until the end. I finally did it the last year, and that actually was the key to showing him that I was a prize, that he needed to work towards getting and, and pursuing and I finally made myself a treasure before I was just laying there like whenever you're ready I'm here whenever you change your mind I'll wait forever if I need to and that's what women do they just sit around waiting waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and making themselves completely available making it so easy for the guy they're never gonna work for you why you make it so easy so that's number one seeing that God instructs men to cherish their wives and that you're a treasure and they're to pursue you. They're to look for what scripture tells them to look for. Proverbs 31 is what men are instructed to look at and to try to find a wife like that. And then they're to look and choose their wife and then pursue her. Well, women are just like, I want to be loved. And they're like, make themselves totally available, not worth pursuing, not needing to be pursued and so we've kind of like made men the way they are today that they don't even want to work for anything um so my biggest thing that I wish I would have been told back then was that I was living completely selfishly everything was about my broken heart and wanting to be loved and how can he not love me how can he not see how can shut up <laughs> you're a Christian well then go devote your life to Christ that's what I needed a slap in the face Go use the season of your life to live oh, in obedience to Christ. But I was so wrapped up in myself and my broken heart and my waiting for him to just see that I was the one. It was like a totally wasted, foolish three years of my life. Um, and then the other thing was, you know, what do I want in a husband? Well, hopefully what scripture says a husband should be. And what do those men want in a wife? Well, what scripture tells them to want in a wife. So I should have been looking at Proverbs 31 and aspiring to be that so that I could end up with a man that loves the Lord, that was going to be a leader in his home and, you know, all these things. Um, so that's another angle to look at it. Um, instead of pouring all your energy into this relationship that you should really just be moving away from, um, aspire to be a Proverbs 31 woman so that this biblical mature man of God will see you and pursue you because you are measuring up to what scripture calls you uh, to be an excellent wife. Um, I'll give you a snack right now, baby. And then um, 
And there's one more thing. Hollywood. Yeah, I already shared that part. Hollywood and the lies. Get in the word. Let the Lord renew your mind <laughs> with truth and get Hollywood out of there. Romance is beautiful. Romance is real, but romance is only found in love, and love is only found in Christ. And um, if you're, you know, if you want a deep, true love that is true and, and profound and forever, what it looks like is biblical um commitment sacrificial selfless um it's not this <laughs> hollywood stuff <laughs> it's a lot deeper and a lot better than that and i know i've said this in my videos before i am a romantic and i've watched every romantic movie you can name but now when i watch romantic movies I don't know what I saw in them. I'm just like, oh my gosh, how stupid. Like, what I have with my husband is so much better than this because this is such surface level, shallow. And after nine years of marriage, the depth of our love and commitment is so much richer than that, you know? And that's what it's about. It's living life together, committing to each other, living for each other's happiness selflessness and um obeying scripture and that is when true love it abounds and, and it's real and it's fulfilling <laughs> um romance is so selfish it's always about what you want and what you what you hope for and, and when you don't have it you're dissatisfied and disappointed and that's hollywood not the lord and then you're dissatisfied because you're letting hollywood renew your mind instead of god so that's what I would have to say and what I wish somebody would have told me 15 years ago. Um, I don't know what I would have done. Maybe I would have severed uh, my relationship with my husband earlier than I did and maybe he would have pursued me earlier than he did and maybe we would have still ended up together. I have no idea. Um, I know that even though we took the road we took, messy, destructive, ruined everything, God is so good that he healed it and restored all of it. And that's just the plan he had for us. That doesn't mean that that's everybody's plan. Um, that that's what's going to happen to everybody. So if you are in the position that I was in, don't place your hope in that maybe it'll turn out the way it did for me. Because I did things wrong. I needed to obey the Lord and devote my life to the Lord and instead I was wrapped up in all this stuff and really could have used that time in my life for a lot more productive things um in service to the Lord and growth in my in my faith um so be content where God has you he knows what he's doing I always say this when you're always wishing for the next thing in your life you're pretty much wishing your life away because you just want to skip over this and this is precious this is now this is what god has now and he has you where he wants you and so be content in that cherish that embrace that and live that um i hope this is helpful have a great day